Corals of brilliant colors spread out before you. Fish race by in a perfectly orchestrated ballet. Life is in constant motion. This is the third largest coral reef in the world, covering 2,900 square miles and stretching from Miami to Key West, Florida. It is a paradise beneath the waves. But despite appearances, it is a paradise on the verge of being lost. Ken Niedemeyer is founder of the Coral Restoration Foundation. I'd say that in the Florida Keys, the coral cover, the reefs are about 20% of what they were. 20% of what they were? Yeah. If you ask Joe Weatherby, president of Artificial Reefs International, what he thinks, Bleak is putting it mildly. I think that saving the natural reef in its state is, is, if not impossible, then I don't know what the solution is. I think the toothpaste is out of the tube. And it has been oozing for decades. So much has conspired over the years against these living underwater gardens. The warming of the ocean's waters, human wastewater runoff, overfishing, ship groundings, the list goes on and on. Now this may surprise you. The reef is also suffering from a very unusual source, a fish. But this species has no business being here. On a scale of one to five, one being you know nothing about lionfish. About two dozen people have crammed the Key Largo, Florida headquarters of the Reef Environmental Education Foundation, or REEF. They are here to learn about one nasty invasive species, the lionfish, and more importantly, how to kill it. Lionfish are the most recent attack on the reef. They look like underwater peacocks. Their beauty made them favorites in aquariums until they grew too big and people simply threw them in the ocean, an ocean where these creatures native to the Indo-Pacific didn't belong. Lad Akins is director of special projects for Reef. The problem isn't just that lionfish are here, but the problem is what they're doing to this system. Lionfish are voracious predators. They eat almost anything that moves. Lionfish love the reef where they can hide and attack. And some of their favorite meals are fish known as cleaners and grazers. Lionfish love to chow down on parrotfish. Parrotfish are critical to the reef's health. They keep algae from building up on the coral. And the coral dies when that happens. Exactly, the coral can die by being smothered by this algae. Adding to the dilemma, lionfish have no natural enemies. Their venomous spines make even sharks think twice. And one of their favorite things to do is to make more lionfish. I hate to use the term, but they do breed like rabbits. <laughs> yeah, they breed like lionfish. Yeah, yeah these fish uh, reproduce as often as every two to four days. 30 to 50,000 eggs per spawning event. That's about two to four million eggs a year. They have already spread to the Bahamas, South America, and across the Gulf of Mexico. The only limiting factor to their range, they can't stand cold water. Hoping to better understand their travels, Akins and his team capture lionfish on the reef and during a five minute procedure, implant a tiny transmitter. It's all done underwater. All underwater using scuba gear in a two person team. Stick this up into that incision in the gut cavity and then suture the fish back up. So how do you get rid of them? Any way you can. Spear them, net them. Reef and other environmental organizations run lionfish roundups with prizes for the most caught, but that's making barely a dent. The lionfish's kryptonite might be that it's delicious to eat. It's not hopeless, John. Look at that. There, there are some some novel strategies, developing a lionfish-specific trap that, that could involve fishermen, and developing the market, which provides incentive for those fishermen to go out and target lionfish. Like Aikens, others are doing what they can to save the reef, including sinking ships. In 2009, the old U.S. Navy ship, the Vandenberg, was sunk off Key West, Florida. It is one of the largest ships ever intentionally sunk to create an artificial reef. 
These ships take pressure off the natural reefs, says Joe Weatherby, president of Artificial Reefs International. It becomes like a hotel, like a watering hole in the Old West. Fish are looking for protection from predators, they're looking for breeding opportunities, and they're looking for food, just like us. And uh, artificial reefs provide all that. Within minutes, Weatherby says, fish began showing up to check it out. The sunken ships that dot the Florida Keys provide an alternative for divers, snorkelers, and fishermen. That reduces the pressure on the natural reef. But is it enough? Are the natural reefs making a comeback? Uh, absolutely not. No, and nowhere in the world is that taking place. The, re reefs, the reefs are in decline everywhere on the planet. As Weatherby sees it, you have to do something, whatever it takes to at least stop the further downward spiral of the coral gardens. I'm not talking about ringing the keys with, with artificial reefs, but they, they are certainly, and I see this with absolute crystal clarity, the, the future, the future of supporting, growing, maintaining marine life's marine ecosystem. And that's the key. Whether artificial or natural, reefs are an ecosystem unto themselves. If the coral dies, the system collapses. Coral reefs make up less than 1% of the ocean bottom, but scientists say they are responsible for up to 40% of the organisms that live in the ocean. Ken Niedemeyer is founder of the Coral Restoration Foundation. A coral reef is a community and it requires uh, fish and it requires lobsters and all kinds of things working together in it and when you take all the fish out it's unbalanced if you take all the lobster out it becomes unbalanced and so you know the whole system all through the world is becoming unbalanced people need a healthy reef as much as the fish do in the Florida Keys it's estimated that 70 percent of all the jobs are related to the coral reef fishing diving snorkeling hotels restaurants tourism Saving the reef is Niedemeyer's passion. His team does what amounts to coral farming. They grow elkhorn and staghorn corals underwater, some in neat rows on the bottom, others hang like ornaments on a Christmas tree. Scientists say these two species are down 98%. If you take two of the dominant species, whenever people would measure coral cover, two of the dominant species were staghorn and elkhorn coral, and they're essentially gone. Over the, course of the, last month. These were over the last month. The corals are started from cuttings the size of a knuckle. During a year in the nursery, they can quadruple in size. The team then replants them by gluing them to dead coral heads. The success rate is remarkable. Last year, the foundation replanted 20,000 corals throughout the Keys and the Caribbean. This year, they're going to places like Roatan, Curacao, the Virgin Islands, and the Philippines getting them started on their own coral nurseries. Are you optimistic that the coral reefs can be saved? People have been watching them die for so long and hearing the, you know, there's nothing we can do and it's too late message. And I think they're ready for a new message. They're ready to roll their sleeves up and do something. Dave Vaughn is doing something using brains, not just his. He is director of the Moat Marine Tropical Research Lab in Summerlin Key, about 20 miles north of Key West. Uh, these are corals which uh, were started with uh, a piece about the size of a pencil eraser, and in as little as about four months, have grown to uh, the size of a half of a domino. It's unclear why. Vaughn believes it may be like people when we cut ourselves, the skin heals over quickly. The breakthrough didn't end with just the rapid growth. The researchers took four small coral pieces and placed them a couple inches apart, and something remarkable happened. And in about six to nine months, not only did they grow, continue to grow fast, but they merged together. You can see the, the spot where each coral was, but you can see by the pattern of the brain coral that it's now one brain coral, and this coral would have taken 10 to 15 years to grow and it was grown in one year. One year. One year. Vaughn's work has added significance because the corals he's working with, brain, mountain, star, boulder, are the reef builders, like concrete block in a building. 
The growth rate means the coral will reach the reproductive age that much faster. Important why? Take a look at these images. You are witnessing coral reproduction. Once a year, after a full moon in August, corals release sperm bundles and egg bundles all at the same time, but only one in a million makes it. The faster corals reach reproductive age, the better your chances of saving the reef. I can't tell you how many people have called me and said, as coral scientists and say, hey Dave, how come you're claiming you can grow something 25 times faster than I reported corals grow out 10 years ago? And so... Uh, we, you tell them, come on down here and look. That's right, come on, take a look, because uh, you got to get here quick because they're growing so fast. <laughs> no one is saying the world's coral reefs will ever be what they once were, but scientists say the work in the Keys is proving these underwater villages may at least survive.